Hi, I'm Jordan. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two kiddos, ages four and 10 months, and I have recently started my homeschooling journey. Before this, I was an English language arts teacher in secondary school, which means middle and high. We have just recently started our kindergarten year with our son, and for math, we are using Math UC. The level that we're on is the primer level, and I just thought I would share a little bit about what this looks like at this level, the different lessons that they have, and how we are gonna go about using it. The first thing that I wanted to share with you guys is the teacher manual. Now, as far as teacher manuals go, for homeschool curriculum, this one isn't that bad. It's pretty thin, <laughs> all things considered. If you open up the book, the first thing that you're going to see over here is their curriculum sequence. You can see that this is their primer book, which is essentially their kindergarten level. This is their basic introduction to math. After this, we're gonna move on should this be successful for us, as it has been so far, to alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, and this would cover essentially grades one through six, and then it continues on with pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and calculus. So I've mentioned this before, but that is one of the reasons why we really liked this curriculum was because it goes all the way through and could be something that we could stick with for the foreseeable future. On this side, we have our table of contents. In Math UC, there are 30 lessons for each of their levels. And that lesson is broken down into different pieces, but these are essentially the 30 lessons that are included. So lesson one is number recognition, lesson two, writing numerals, lesson three, number recognition and writing numerals, lesson four, geometric shapes, rectangles, lesson five, number recognition and writing numerals, lesson six, geometric shapes, circles, lesson seven, number recognition and writing numerals, lesson eight, geometric shapes, triangles, lesson nine, place value, units and tens. Lesson 10, place value hundreds. Lesson 11, unit bars. Lesson 12, addition, introduction and symbol. Lesson 13, addition plus one. Lesson 14, counting to 20. Lesson 15, addition, two plus two and three plus three, vertical addition. Lesson 16, shapes squares, addition, four plus four and five plus five. Lesson 17, skip counting by two. Lesson 18, addition of tens. Lesson 19, skip counting by 10. Lesson 20, addition of a hundreds. Lesson 21, solving for an unknown. Lesson 22, skip counting by five. Lesson 23, tally marks. Lesson 24, addition, making 10. Lesson 25, skip count to find area. Lesson 26, telling time with minutes. Lesson 27, telling time with hours. Lesson 28, telling time with minutes and hours. Lesson 29, subtraction, introduction and symbol. And lesson 30, subtraction minus one. Looking at this, this all seems like a very basic introduction to math, but this is for kindergarten, so it makes sense um, that it would be a very simple introduction. Then if you continue on, it has a how to use, including their suggested approach for how to prepare the lesson, present the lesson, and the, how to go about doing practice for your student. And then it gets into each individual lesson. This is not a very thick book, so you'll notice that for each lesson, there isn't really that much there. Mostly what is here is explaining to you um, what it is that is going to be taught throughout the lesson, and then also giving any other tips that might be needed. For example, when we get to lesson three, 
an additional tip that they give is to say that you should be now adding in a calendar piece to your day. And that by doing that, you can practice this idea of shading in a certain amount of numbers within a whole. If you were not to get the teacher guide, you might miss out on little tips like this that it gives you for what you should be doing in addition to the practice that comes with it. Let's go ahead and look at lesson four, the geometric shapes rectangles. For each lesson, there is a video component that you can have, as well as seven worksheets that are front and back. Now, in this lesson, Geometric Shapes Rectangles, we could watch the video through a digital online toolbox. You can also use the DVD to watch the lesson. Now, you can have it where you watch the lesson first and then use that as a guide to help you teach the lesson to your child or the way we do it in our house, we watch the lesson together. And then that way I know exactly the way that it's supposed to be taught and my son sees it the same way as well. And I'm able to answer questions that way. So for lesson four, the focus would be on geometric shapes, rectangles. With that lesson is gonna come seven sheets. They're all gonna be labeled up at the top with the number and then letters A through G. So 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, 4E, 4F, and 4G. Worksheets A, B, and C are all lesson practice. So what that means is in the video, they are going to show you exactly how to answer this problem. Um, the teacher goes through and shows a problem that's exactly like this and shows how to go about solving it. So there's really no guesswork at that point. You just follow his example. So for this, how many rectangles are white? So here we're seeing what a rectangle looks like. And then my son would go through and count the four rectangles. It comes with manipulatives, so he might even put a one unit on each one and then count them. And then he's gonna go through on our number line and circle the correct answer. They do this for all of 4A, for 4B and for 4C. Then once you get to sheets D, E, and F, you're gonna notice that it becomes systematic review. With the review, you're going to have a review of the same type of question but it's also going to review the other types of questions that they've had in the previous lessons. So this is exactly what they learned in lesson four, but these types of questions come from lessons one through three. So you will see that we do have some differences now in the question types. The last type is on the final sheet for the lesson. 4G, and this is their application and enrichment page. Now with the application and enrichment page, it takes the concept or um, idea of that lesson and it approaches it in a different way. So for example, on the front of this page, we're looking at patterns. Now nothing else we looked at had patterns, but we are looking at rectangles. So we're now taking this idea of can we recognize the rectangle and can we see what type of rectangle is going to come next in our pattern. On the back is a different type of enrichment and application where before we were counting rectangles that were all spread out, 
Now we're gonna be counting rectangles that are being used together to form a picture. So being able to recognize that not only is this a house, but this is a house that is made up of several rectangles to make that shape. And how many is that? So while this is um, not the exact type of question that they learned, it's kind of building off of ideas or concepts that they have been learning. Sorry for the difference in lighting. I realized that I forgot to show you the manipulatives that are also a big part of this program. Um, so I just wanted to show that as well. But with the manipulatives, they come in these number blocks that are um, color coded, which is really neat. I'm pretty sure that this color coding is just another way to help the students to better understand um, math and visualize it. That's I think why it's called Math UC. Um, but we can see that it comes with a one unit, a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and then it also comes with a 100 block. So um, right now in the beginning, they're just using these ones, but um, even just from letting my son explore the manipulatives and just kinda um, play with them a little bit, he's been able to figure out that like the one and the two together both fit on top of the three. So like, like he's starting to make those connections just from looking at the different colors and playing with them um, a bit, which is really cool. The way that we have been approaching math you see at our house has been by breaking it down into segments of two. So what I mean by that is on the first day, my son and I will watch the lesson video together. And these videos range in length. The last one that we watched was less than a minute long, uh, just to give you some framework for that. And then with that lesson video, we then do worksheet A, and that is one day. Then the next day, we do B and C together, then we do D and E, and on the final day, we do F and G. If you have a four-day week, this works out really well. Um, it's however you wanna spread it out. The cool thing about this is, if you wanted to, you could see that your child is doing maybe really well in the practice and you could skip some of the worksheets. So if right off the bat in lesson A, you see, okay, they've got this, then maybe you wanna hold off on B and C. It's up to you. You know your child, you know what's best for them. When it comes to my son, um, he's very young for kindergarten and I don't want him to be bored, but I also wanna make sure to really build up his confidence and make sure that we really do have these concepts down. We used the Evan Moore Skill Sharpeners for math in pre-K to build a foundation and that has been extremely beneficial and worked really well actually with this um, Matthew C. Primer set. So he has been able to really transfer some of those skills and, and move forward really well. Um, it is not difficult for us to do two of these worksheets a day. As I showed you, most of them only have three questions on them. Some of them will have four, uh, maybe two on the front, two on the back, but they're very um, simple questions because it's kindergarten, but they're, they're very approachable questions, especially since we've already done a practice problem with the video. So it's nothing um, overwhelming or um, anxiety inducing. In fact, usually in lesson A, I've noticed that the exact question that the teacher does is in there for them. And my son actually will search it out and find it and do that question first because he knows exactly what to do. And it's almost like kind of like checking his work. He does that one person like, okay, I got this. And then he'll go back through and do all of the rest of them uh, with me there. But we have really enjoyed this. I really like that it is 
clearly a mastery approach where he's got it by the end. And so when we get to those sheets that are the review sheets, he knows what to do because he drilled it so much in the beginning. Um, I really love how it seems like we're building a really strong foundation for math moving forward. And hopefully if things progress in this way, it is only going to continue to be very successful for us, which I am looking forward to. If you have any other questions about Matthew C, how we use the program, if you wanna see us do one of our lessons together, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos from me, subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.